is the head of the Move Forward Party. He joins us live now from Bangkok. Mr. Peter, thank you so much for being with us. We'll talk about some of the challenges that your party faces uh, in just a second. But in the meantime, just in terms of these elections, what sort of message do you think is being spent, sent rather, to the military-backed establishment with the outcome of these elections? I think it's pretty clear that people have demanded change here in Thailand, you know, with the historical voting turnout in Thai politically history, it's very clear that it's a sentiment of the era has changed and we have developed a consensus for a new day here in Bangkok, Thailand. So even though you won the most seats and you won the largest share of the popular vote, it is obviously one thing to actually win the election. It's another thing entirely to actually become prime minister, especially because the military has so right. much say in this process. Just walk us through some of right. the challenges that face you and your party going forward. Well, I think it's, it's pretty clear that the coalition is taking shape as we speak or right now. I have my negotiation team. I have my transition team to make sure that the transition of power is smooth. Uh, however, the process is uh, three steps from now. The election committee has to endorse the candidacy. Then we have to elect a House speaker. And then the third step would to have uh, joint voting between the lower house and the upper house. That's where it's uh, politics of elected by 25 million people against appointed of senators from uh, military uh, cool back uh, in the last decade. So that will be the kind of uh, struggles that people are uh, looking at. However, I have my uh, scenario analysis of various scenarios that could come out, and we have prepared uh, a strategic response to prepare for each of the scenarios that might take up. So in terms of one of the scenarios, I mean, how do you overcome the powerful sort of voting bloc in the Senate that has clearly demonstrated time and time again that they prefer a military candidate. How do you overcome that? Well, it's, it's not just an absolute uh, roadblock only from the senators uh, because the unity of the senators is not the same as it was before four years ago. Uh, for the past four years, you know, the significant shift in public opinion and um, the kind of consensus that's already been developed and shown in the election. So it's not always the case that the senators, even if it's military appointed, will decide on the vote as uh, before in the previous election. So I think if we keep communicating and we keep explaining what we're trying to do to the country, uh, we, we, how well we mean uh, for the future of uh, this country, I think that will not be a significant uh, roadblock. And the price to pay, the cost of going against uh, 25 million votes here in Thailand will be very hefty. So just in terms of the outcome of the election here, one of the things that has worked in your favor, it appears, is the fact that your party won by such a large margin. Had the outcome of the election been that much more hazy, that much closer. This would be a, a very different scenario for you and your party, just in terms of how much harder the weeks ahead would look. Well, that, that's about you know weight of the politics. It depends on the desire of the voters, how they wanted to see the country going forward. And it turns out to be 15 million vote for me, which is almost like 2.5 times uh, more than the previous election. Uh, even uh, with all that we went through for the past uh, four years, uh, we still won by a large uh, margin, and that gave us the consensus to form the government and hopefully to deploy uh, our uh, policies that we have promised to the people of Thailand before the votes. So what would it look like if the outcome of this election is subverted um, by the military? I mean, I mentioned in one of my earlier questions that you know, it's one thing to win the election in Thailand, it's another thing to actually emerge as the winner, as in become a prime minister. What are, what's at stake here if the military subverts the will, as you point out, of 25 million people? 
Well, we have to minimize that risk. I agree with the question that there's two different things from uh, winning an election and the roadmap to become the prime minister. However, I have the plan to bridge that gap between what's on paper and what's on the streets on, in terms of reality of the politics. So even if the election is done but politicking uh, is taking shape, and like I uh, answer you previously, that we have two or three teams just to make sure that we minimize the risk of subversion and uh, hopefully that we keep communicating to the people and, and that will become the kind of uh, desire, the kind of consensus that, that allows me to bridge the gap. When you think about what happened in, in 2019, um, your party, the Move Forward Party's predecessor, the Future Forward Party, won the third most votes um, back in 2019. And shortly right. after the election, the party ended up being dissolved and the leaders ended up being banned from mm -hmm. politics. So that just sort of gives you a taste of what could happen in this scenario. Looking back at that, at what happened four years ago, how much does that concern you? Um, I'm not worried, but I'm not careless as well. I mean, I've been in, in politics in Thailand for the past 20 years, started from a very junior position, so I, I can see the brutality, um, the brutality of politics all around the world, not just Thailand. So I think what we uh, need to do just to make sure that we're not concerned about this is to anticipate scenarios that could happen and learn from the past and we prevent it from happening. We, I have a strong legal team. I have a, a strong uh, practices uh, just to make sure that we don't give out any uh, easy targets for party uh, dissolution once again or to get me out of uh, my authority for no reasons. Yes, there's you know, professional and personal attacks against me, but I have prepared in the past uh, in order to um, clarify and explain and, and making sure I have a strong legal basis for anything that comes my, my way to the government house. So these elections, of course, were monumental just in terms of the number of young people, the sheer number of young people coming out and um, showing their sort of ardent opposition to military rule. Um, mm -hmm. With that responsibility, mm -hmm. just walk us through some of your policy priorities for Thailand over the next sort of uh, f four to five years. Mm -hmm. Well, your question is two or three folds. First of all, you know, Young Borders uh, came out a lot, uh, about five million new uh, first-time borders here in Thailand. But the entire generation, not just the first time, not just the young, you know, the middle age or the old, you know, with the historical voting turnout of seven, almost 76 percent, that's pretty sensational. Um, in terms of the second fold, you asked me about uh, policy priorities. It's actually three Ds. First is to demilitarize. Second is to demonopolize. And third is to decentralize Thailand. I think with a three-prong approach, uh, that's the only way that we can fully democratize uh, Thailand and make sure that Thailand is back to business. Thailand is back on the global arena, making sure that you know, the country is contributing as well as benefiting by the new definition of globalization. All right, Mr. Peter, thank you so much for being with us and best of luck as your party moves forward and forms a co coalition. Thank you so much for having me. Of thank course, you. you're very welcome. I appreciate it.